Greetings, friends. Mark Palermo here with another movie review today. And the movie we're reviewing, or that I'm reviewing, don't take all the credit, is Ted, the feature live action debut of Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane. A lot of people are going to go into this movie with sort of their prejudices about MacFarlane's brand of comedy. I've read all the debates, but I actually don't have those prejudices so much because for some reason I've never seen an entire episode of Family Guy. What actually is apparent right away is that uh, McFarland has, in making this transition from animation to live action, the same flat visual look of this movie that Mike Judge had in both Extract and in Office Space. A movie like this doesn't particularly need an overt stylization. Ted is rooted in this concept of arrested development. This guy, John, is 35 years old. He's never quite taken responsibility. He's still scared of lightning. He is still best friends with his talking teddy bear, who has some sort of magical power based on uh, the scientific phenomenon of a wish that John made when he was a child. And so the, him and this bear are still best friends, and it's kind of you know, the one hurdle within his relationship. He's going out with this girl named Lori, played by Mila Kunis. The cast actually does a lot to sell this movie because uh, there's a real kind of likability there. You know, Mila Kunis being the girl that every hetero guy and every homo girl wants to be with. And then Mark Wahlberg, who's, well, I mean, my friend Larissa actually hates him, but Wahlberg is a good actor. Now, what works wonders for Ted is that it actually feels conceived as a movie. There's just been so many years of, like, all these comedies that are, you know, these... It's almost as if the scripts are half there and the gaps are kind of filled in by the actors improv most of the time. Uh, this movie doesn't, you know, get to that indulgence. I don't feel like the DVD is going to come up with a two-and-a-half-hour director's cut or something annoying. It's a scripted movie that, you know, has a concept and sticks with it. But... I kind of got annoyed with Ted's brand of douchebag humor pretty fast. The dependency on pop culture references, which McFarlane's often criticized for, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And they work when they're integrated within the fabric of the movie, and they don't when they're mere non sequiturs. And these bits really kind of drive home that Ted doesn't really have much of a satiric perspective on anything, as well as much of a humanistic view on anything. What McFarlane is doing in Ted is sort of using this kind of emblem of childhood innocence, a teddy bear, and, you know, just kind of putting all these, like, shock value jokes around it. The problem with that is, aside from the jokes not especially being clever a lot of the time, is that they're just reinforcing the center of this movie, which is a white man's uh, ability to live his life. So let's kind of make a bunch of jokes about, you know, people with diseases and racist jokes about terrorists and sexist jokes and homophobic jokes. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing in Ted that's like so outrageous, so shocking. It's just the kind of mere pileup of all this stuff. And what Ted doesn't quite get about comedy is that there's nothing actually subversive about being an asshole. Not to mention that the stuff bear himself, Ted, is just kind of like a cranky frat boy more than a very enduring character. I always remember something Steve Martin once said, which is that he's uh, willing to make jokes about people for things that they can control, but he's not willing to make jokes about people for things they can't. And I feel that McFarlane, based on Ted, uh, really kind of needs to figure out his ethos a little bit. There's a difference, of course, between being able to laugh at yourself and subjected to others laughing at you. So, food for thought, Ted gets a rating of C-. It's better than The Hangover Part 2, but not as good as The Color Purple. It's the 4th of July, but I hear no fireworks. I'm Mark Palermo. This is Blip on the Radar.